For many years, Miami's beachfront high-rise buildings were celebrated as symbols of modern engineering. Deeper foundations, thicker concrete, stricter construction standards. They were marketed as structures strong enough to withstand hurricanes, rising sea levels, and the shifting conditions of Florida. These buildings were presented as safe, resilient, and carefully designed for the long term. But new satellite data is now telling a different story. Some of Miami's most expensive buildings are not standing as still as people once believed. They are sinking, slowly, inch by inch, year after year. There is no sound, no warning, no clear sign for the people living inside. Yet when these tiny movements are tracked over time, they begin to form a troubling pattern along the city's most crowded coastline. What makes this even more concerning is that this is not the result of a sudden natural disaster. It is the quiet consequence of decisions that were once believed to protect Miami. Why is this happening? Who will end up paying the price? And when will these invisible changes become impossible to ignore? One, what nobody notices beneath Miami's oceanfront balconies. For years, people in Miami held on to a familiar belief. These coastal high-rise buildings were built to last. They were designed to withstand strong winds, heavy rain, and constant exposure to salt water. When buyers moved in, they were told about thicker concrete, deeper support columns, and newer building standards compared to earlier generations. All of this reinforced a simple promise that these were carefully calculated structures. Everyday life made that promise feel even more real. In the morning, balcony doors opened to ocean air drifting into the living room. Elevators ran smoothly. Rooftop pools opened on time. Cars moved in and out of parking garages without issue. For most residents, the building felt no different from any other modern structure. There was no reason to suspect that anything below the surface was wrong. In fact, if someone had asked at the time whether these buildings were at risk, most people would have said no. There were no emergency warnings, no unusual repair notices, no calls to pay attention to the foundations or structural supports. The city moved along at its usual pace and everything appeared normal. But the most significant changes often do not happen where people can easily see them. They do not arrive with loud noises, and they do not show up during a storm. They happen slowly, in silence, and are usually noticed only when someone looks back over many years. For a long time, satellites passing over Miami along the same fixed paths kept recording images of the same buildings, the same rooftops, the same balconies. When researchers compared those images over time, they began to notice something unexpected. Some coastal buildings were not completely stationary. Their position was changing, very slowly, in a vertical direction. The change was so small that residents could not feel it during daily life. No one woke up to find the floor lower than before. No one felt the building tilt or shake. But when the data was tracked continuously over many years, the movement became clearer. What caught researchers' attention was not how big or small the numbers were, but how consistent the movement was. This was not a sudden event during a hurricane season. It was a slow, steady process that continued year after year. More importantly, most of these buildings were not under construction. They had been completed long ago, fully occupied, and widely considered settled in the way most people understand that term. That fact raises an uncomfortable question. If buildings thought to be stable are still changing over time, what does that say about the ground the entire city is resting on? From there, a series of very practical questions began to take shape in people's minds. Not questions about satellites or technology, but questions tied to everyday life. Will these quiet changes affect maintenance costs, home values, or insurance? And more importantly, if everything continues to happen in silence, when will these changes stop being confined to technical reports and become something residents can no longer ignore? 2. What Miami is built on and how it moves. When people think about Miami's beachfront high-rise buildings, many imagine them standing on solid ground, similar to cities built on hard rock. But Miami's reality is different. Most of the coastal areas where people live sit on a narrow stretch of land formed from sand, ancient coral, and limestone typical of South Florida. This ground is strong enough to build on, but it is not something that remains completely still over time. Put simply, the ground beneath Miami can respond, 
water moves through these limestone layers. Pressure from what is built above can spread downward. When a large amount of weight sits in place for long periods, the ground does not suddenly collapse. Instead, it compresses gradually, little by little. This compression happens so slowly that people rarely notice it during everyday life. This is not unfamiliar territory for construction professionals. Engineers understand that after a building is completed, it goes through a settling phase, when the foundation gradually stabilizes under its own weight. After some time, this process is considered finished and the building is assumed to be still in the way most people understand it. Miami's challenge is that the ground is not supporting just one building at a time. Over many years, older low-rise structures have been replaced by taller and heavier towers. Empty lots have become developments with deep underground garages. Each new project adds weight, but also changes how soil and water interact beneath the city's surface. Water plays an even larger role than what can be seen. Water from the ocean, from heavy rainfall, and from drainage systems moves constantly through the limestone below Miami. As water levels shift, and as flow is redirected to manage flooding, the ground can respond in slow but persistent ways. These responses rarely create clear warning signs in the short term. Because these movements happened so gradually, they went largely unnoticed for many years. Residents did not feel floors lowering. Large cracks did not suddenly appear. The city carried on as usual. Based on daily experience alone, there was little reason to suspect the ground was changing. That began to shift only when the city was viewed from a different perspective. Not from the street, but from above. Over many consecutive years, Earth-observing satellites passed over Miami along repeated paths. Each time they recorded the position of the same buildings, the same rooftops, the same balcony corners, with enough precision to detect very small differences over time. When these images were compared year after year, some locations were no longer exactly where they had been. The shifts were not dramatic, just small movements repeating over and over. Looked at on their own, they seemed insignificant. But when viewed together across many years, these movements became clearer and harder to dismiss. It is important to understand that satellite data does not say a building is dangerous or about to fail. It does not issue emergency warnings. What it provides is a signal that the ground and the structures above it are still adjusting, even after they were thought to be stable. This is the kind of information that becomes visible only when looking back over a long period, not within a single day or a single hurricane season. From there, the question begins to change. It is no longer just about whether one building has a problem. It becomes a broader question about how the city itself is built and monitored. If the ground beneath Miami is not completely still, and if that fact becomes clear only after years of observation from space, then how many other quiet changes are taking place that everyday life has never been asked to pay attention to? 3. Why? Even small ground. Shifts worry engineers. When people hear that some buildings in Miami have shifted only a few inches over many years, the first reaction is often not worry. A few inches are not visible to the eye. Not enough to jam doors, tilt floors, or create obvious wall cracks. In daily life, that number sounds like a small technical detail, disconnected from real-world experience. But in construction, the concern is rarely about the absolute number. The concern is how the change happens and how long it continues. A building can tolerate small movements if they occur evenly, allowing the entire structure to adjust together. What draws engineers' attention is when movement is uneven. At that point, forces are no longer distributed as they were in the original design. High-rise buildings function as integrated systems. Foundations, columns, floors, and walls are designed to share loads together. When the ground beneath reacts slowly and unevenly, that system has to adapt bit by bit. This adaptation does not cause immediate failure. It is more like placing a structure into a state where it must keep adjusting, year after year. Because the process is slow, these movements are rarely treated as emergencies. There is no indication that buildings face an imminent risk of collapse. But that does not mean the situation can be ignored. When a structure continues to change after it has been considered settled, the original assumptions begin to require re-evaluation. Another point that concerns professionals is the consistency of the movement. If a shift occurs and then stops, it may simply be the tail end of settling. But when data shows repeated movement across many years, 
the question is no longer about whether things are safe today, but about where this trend is leading. For residents, these questions usually appear indirectly, not through clear warnings, but through changes in how buildings are managed, more inspections, thicker technical reports, discussions about preventive measures even without a specific incident. Together, these signals suggest that closer attention is required than before. This extended monitoring phase is what begins to affect daily life. Once a building enters a state of ongoing observation, it is no longer just a technical matter. It becomes a question of time, cost, and how long this period of uncertainty will last. People are not anxious because a disaster is about to happen, but because they do not know how long this watchful state will continue. From here, the focus of the story shifts more clearly. If a few inches of movement are enough to change how a building is viewed and managed, then how will these quiet changes truly affect residents' daily lives? And at what point do the costs and pressures become impossible to overlook? 4. When homeowners begin paying for invisible changes. For most residents living in Miami's coastal buildings, the story of shifting ground does not begin with data or satellites. It begins with very familiar changes in everyday life. Meetings for residents start running longer. Emails from property management become more frequent and more detailed. Technical reports arrive on a regular basis, even when there is no notice saying the building is in danger. Then come the costs. When a building enters a phase that requires closer monitoring, expenses no longer stop at routine maintenance. Additional inspections, engineering consultations, and preventive planning all require funding. These costs do not disappear after a single payment. They return year after year, showing up as higher maintenance fees or special assessments that residents are expected to share. For people who are still working, this is an annoyance. For retirees living on fixed incomes, it becomes a clear source of pressure. They were not the ones who decided to build taller or dig deeper. They bought their homes expecting expenses to be reasonably predictable over time. But once long-term risks enter the conversation, that sense of predictability becomes fragile. Beyond money, a sense of security also begins to shift. An apartment once seen as a place of rest becomes tied to difficult questions. How much higher will maintenance fees go? Will property values be affected if potential buyers hear about technical reports? And will selling remain a realistic option if this uncertainty continues? What stands out is that no one is saying these buildings are unsafe to live in. There are no evacuation orders, no official conclusions declaring serious structural danger. But living under extended monitoring creates a different kind of strain. It is the strain of carrying ongoing costs and uncertainty without knowing when stability will truly return. For many residents, the story is no longer about a few inches of movement in a technical report. It becomes a story about their life plans, about whether they can remain long-term as they once intended, and about why these long-term consequences only began to surface long after the construction decisions had already been made. This is where a larger question starts to take shape. When residents are the ones bearing years of cost and uncertainty, how were the original decisions that led to this situation made? And who is responsible for the gap between the moment construction was completed and the moment the consequences became visible? 5. Development decisions that outlast their decision makers. Throughout Miami's development, coastal construction has never been random. Waterfront land has grown increasingly expensive. Demand for ocean views has continued to rise. And within limited space, the most common way to maximize value has been to build taller and heavier. That logic has shaped the city's skyline for decades. Within that framework, developers generally act according to what the system encourages. They buy land, apply for permits under existing regulations, complete construction, and sell into the market. Once a project is finished, their direct role usually ends as well. What happens in the 10 or 20 years that follow often falls outside the original business cycle. The problem lies in the gap between those two timelines. Real estate development cycles are measured in years, but the ground and the structures above it respond on a much longer timescale. Slow, small, cumulative movements do not align with how short-term market risks are typically evaluated. They often become noticeable only after buildings are fully sold and occupied.
This does not mean buildings were constructed carelessly or in violation of rules. Most were legally permitted and met the standards in place at the time of construction. But those standards were based on assumptions from an earlier period, when long-term monitoring tools and multi-year data were not as widely available as they are today. The movements observed later simply were not part of how risk was previously assessed. In addition, continuous construction within a confined area can produce cumulative effects. Repeated excavation, added loads, and closely spaced projects over time can cause the ground to adjust again and again. Each new development does not just sit on the land. It can also indirectly influence nearby structures that have existed for years. Seen as a whole, the story is no longer about whether a single project was right or wrong. It becomes a question of how a coastal city balances rapid development with long-term consequences. Construction decisions are made during a specific period, but their effects can last far longer than the time the decision makers themselves remain part of the picture. From here, another question becomes clearer. As buildings continue to stand and residents continue to carry long-term consequences, where does the role of regulation and permitting fit in monitoring, updating, and adjusting decisions made long ago, before these quiet changes, became an unavoidable burden. 6. The question, Miami still has not answered. Looking at the full story, the most striking point is not whether buildings are standing today. Most continue to operate normally. People still live in them. The city remains active and crowded. There is no sign of an immediate crisis. The question Miami faces is not about today, but about the years ahead. The data points to movements that are slow, small, and persistent. They are not large enough to trigger emergency responses, but not small enough to dismiss entirely. They exist in the space in between, where decisions become harder to make. In many coastal cities around the world, this type of movement has been accepted as part of urban life, not as a disaster, but as a condition that must be managed continuously. In those places, the question is no longer how to make the ground completely still, but how to monitor, adjust, and live with very gradual change. Miami now stands at a similar crossroads. The city is built on ground that is not entirely stable, while development continues at the fast pace of a modern market. Those two rhythms do not always align, and the gap between them is where uncertainty begins to enter everyday life. For residents, the concern is not technical language or long-term models. It is very simple questions. How long will costs continue to rise? Will their home values hold? And will these quiet issues be tracked transparently or mentioned only once they can no longer be avoided? For the city itself, the answers are not easy. Development has already happened. Buildings are already there. Past decisions cannot be undone. What remains is how the city chooses to respond to the subtle signals now emerging. By monitoring proactively, updating standards, and communicating clearly with residents, or by waiting until these slow changes force attention in far more difficult ways. That is the question Miami still has no clear answer to. Not whether the city can continue to grow, but whether it can learn to listen to the quiet signals beneath its feet early enough before those changes become something no one can ignore. Thanks a lot for sticking with us till the very end. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you won't miss any of our daily uploads. And now, go ahead and explore some of our top recommended videos popping up on your screen. Goodbye, and see you in the next one.